Okay, so you've got the HP 10B2 Plus. Okay, so with the financial calculator, you can use the HP, you can use the Sharp, you can use the Casio. All the calculators do the same job in terms of working out um, the financial calculations using time value of money. So the reason why we need the special button called Amort is for amortization. So you should have the page with amortization schedules and um, this was a separate PDF that I sent through as additional that needed to be attached to um, number three which was slide 31. You had to insert this table um, just as a step-by-step -step guide for students to calculate the different amounts on the actual table. So principal outstanding, interest due, payment, principal repaid and then principal at the end of the period. So do you have that page with you? Okay, perfect. So the first step when using the HP is to get all the variables on the calculator. You'll see in my question here, I said consider a loan schedule for 5000 being repaid in annual payments over five years. Now you can do this manually. So if you watched the video, you would have saw, uh, saw I did a manual calculation using Excel where I showed all the different columns and then I literally carried through the formulas and then we created the table. There's no need to do that and obviously in the exam you won't have an Excel spreadsheet to help you create all those answers. So the best thing to do is to use the calculator. How do you use the calculator? Well step one is to make sure that all the variables are inserted in the calculator. So you're using the HP. The first step is to second function clear the calculator to make sure that the memory is completely um, clear and there aren't any variables stored in anything. Have you done that? Uh, yes, that's correct. So if you press, um, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't press the blue, I would press the orange. So I would press the orange down arrow and then the C all because that's the color coding. So um, you're pressing uh, the blue up with the C mem, I would rather press the um, arrow down, which is um, orange, with the C all. Still the same button, just the arrow down instead. Do you see that? Okay, so press the arrow down orange, and then the button below it is C all. If you press the arrow down and then C all, then it'll clear everything. And then... On your screen, what did you see? Did you see a I over Y or a P over Y? It should be P over Y zero. Do it again. P Y one, yes, P Y is one, correct. And then it yeah, it, it like flashes and then it disappears. That's correct. Good. So yeah, you should be seeing zeros on the screen after having cleared all. So second function, see all, clears everything. And now you're ready to insert values in the calculator. So what are we going to be inserting? Well, if we look at the actual question, um, you will see here on the actual amortization schedule question that I've given you, I've given you some background information regarding the actual loan. So on the actual question, it says here that consider a loan schedule for 5000 being repaid in annual payments over five years. The interest rate is 15% per annum. Obviously, you aren't given the payments, so that's the first step. I need to know what the payments are before I can actually do this calculation. So how do you work out the payments? You need to insert all the right variables in the calculator. So on your financial calculator, you're going to insert the loan amount of 5,000, which is your PV. So how do you insert that? You would type in 5, then 0, 0, 0, okay, to represent 5,000, and then press the PV button. Okay, now we need to insert the rate. So type in 1 and 5 to represent 15, and then press the I over YR button. Then you need to insert the number of periods. In this case, it's over five years, so N is five. So I need to insert that, so I press five and then press N. 
Now you've got three variables. When looking at amortization, you're looking at a fourth variable, which is the PMT, which is the payment. So to get the payment, I need to solve for the payment. And how do I solve for the payment? Well, on the HP, you're literally going to calculate it. So you're going to press the PMT button. And then you will see an amount of 1491.5 ADA P on your screen. And that's the answer for the payment. Do you have that? Yes, minus is fine. Yeah, minus is fine because... Yeah, because remember the calculator uses pluses and minuses to represent an inflow or outflow. So if I'm getting a negative, that's correct in line with the theory because with an amortization, you pay off a loan over time. So you would expect the payment to represent an outflow, which is negative. Okay, but remember, the signs aren't that important as long as you've got the correct amount, which is 1491.58, then you're good. Okay, great. So you've got that amount. Now you've got all the right variables in the calculator. All the calculator now needs to do is read each line by line by line in order to get the right um, variables in terms of principal outstanding, interest due, principal repaid. And that the calculator can do for you. The only problem with the HP, the HP is not the best calculator to use to do amortization because you have to literally go line by line by line, which can be quite time consuming, especially if you've got, let's say, more than five years to look at. If I had 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you're going to have to do it 10, 20, 30, 40 times. Okay? It's, a, it's a repetitive process. So I'm going to show you how to read line number one. Okay, to read line number one, what you need to do now after having inserted all the variables. So don't, don't clear the calculator. The HP needs all the variables, so leave the calculator as is. Right now, you're reading the payment on screen. If you now press the AMRT button, AMORT, you'll see AMORT is a shift. It's a second function. Um, it's orange. It's below the FV button on your calculator. It's on the top right. Okay, so now press, press, uh, press the color coding. So down arrow orange and then the um, AMRT. Yes, and then you should probably see 0, 0 appear or 1, 1 appear on your screen. What do you see? Yes, 1-1. One one. So 1-1 one one means you're reading year 1 of the actual table that we have on screen. So now you've got the AMORT function in the actual calculator in terms of um, the user function. All you now need to do is press the equal sign, which is display. See the D-I-S-P? It's just equals. So just press equals. If you press equals once, what number do you see on the screen? Okay, and that represents the principal repaid. Do you see that? Okay, so that's principal repaid. It should show like pro uh, on your screen, you probably see like PRN or something like that. Yes. Yeah, PRIN is representing the principal repaid in an amortization question. Okay, press equals again, and then you'll read another line item on line number one. Good. So do you see that's the amount that we've got in the table for first year interest due for this amortization schedule? Okay, press equals again. Hundred percent. Yeah. So now you've got the balance, which is what four two five eight point four two. Is that right? Good. Okay. So that's how you read those line items from the actual calculator. The question now is, well, what happens if I'm not wanting to read line number one? I'm wanting to read line number, let's say, four. So how the HP works is that you need to you press you need to press amort 
four times. So you've pressed it once. That's why you're reading year one. Do you agree? Yeah? Okay, so now press the orange arrow down and then that FE button with the AMORT, the second function. Second function, AMORT, and then you would see like 2-2 two, two on your screen, right? So if I'm pressing again, I must press it down until I get 4-4. Yeah, so press it, so that you pressed it once, you pressed it twice, now press it for the third time. Okay, press it one more time. Okay, so now you're looking at 4-4, four, four, which according to our table is year 4's values. So the first value that you should read on the calculator when pressing equals is the PRIN. So if you press equals once, do you see 1127.85? One, one, Yes, good. So yeah, the calculator is not rounding it off. Um, I did rounding in the table. That's why the numbers are a little bit off. The calculator gives it to you as is. Okay. Um, if you press equals again, you'll read the interest due for that line. Nice. And then if I press it one last time, I'm going to see the balance, which is that 1297.01, which is the balance outstanding at the end of year four. Okay, you got it. Okay, so that's how you actually do the amortization schedule. Okay, so let's walk, walk through the process one time, one last time, just to recap. Okay, so uh, let's clear the memory. Shift, okay, so arrow down orange with C all orange. That clears like literally everything. As long as your calculator says P over Y is 1, then you're good to do the calculation. Um, it's better just to keep the HP in that mode. I know UNISA sometimes asks you to change the P over Y to this and that and all of that. The problem with that is you have to always change it. Because on the HP, if you change P over Y to anything other than 1, you always need to change it back, even if you clear the calculator completely. That, that's why the HP is not the best of calculators, because um, it's not so user-friendly, because the P of a Y will stay a number, whatever you store it as. Um, default should be 1, and then you just change all the other variables when doing time value of money calculations. Is that alright? Okay, so now the calculator is clear. Uh, which one? Yeah, the, the best calculator is the Casio because it's user, the user interface is just brilliant. Um, the Casio uh, financial consultant um, literally has almost like a, a monitor type interface. So if I type things into the calculator, I can actually view that information almost like a computer. So it's a normal financial calculator. Um, it's just very good in terms of user interface. Um, the next best calculator is the Sharp. Um, the Sharp is what UNISA generally um, prescribes for students to purchase, um, and they also suggest HP. So UNISA says either HP or Sharp, either or, are good options. Um, uh, VITS actually supplies the or recommends the Casio. It doesn't matter which calculator you use. They all do the same thing. Um, you just need to be comfortable um, getting the right values on your specific calculator. So don't go out and buy a new calculator. It's not necessary. Um, just keep using the HP, but just get better at, at using it in terms of being comfortable with the interface. Okay. All right. So let's. So you tell me now what the steps are, and I'll just repeat them, just so we've got it um, on video as well, in case anyone else needs it. So um, we're doing an amortization question. You would be given something like what I've given you here on this example. Consider a loan schedule for five thousand being repaid in equal payments over five years. The interest rate is fifteen. Calculate the payments. So now you would be asked maybe in a multiple choice question. Um, if you've looked at the assignment video that I did previously for one of the other students, you'll see there is a question there where we had to do an amortization calculation and they are something specific like maybe what was the balance outstanding or maybe what was the interest, what was the principal. They will ask something specific, then you just use the calculator to get the right answer. Okay, so I want you to read the line items on line number three. Okay, that's what I'm asking you to do. Um, obviously, the calculator is blank. So what would step number one be?
Good, so, great. So you have to insert all the variables for the actual um, amortization question. So you need a PV, you need an F, uh, not an FE, FE would be zero. So you need PV, you would need I, you would need N, and you would need the payment. Okay, so you've told me to insert the PV, which is 5,000, great. Correct. So now we need to insert the interest, which is 15, as I over YR. Next step. Perfect. So now we have to enter N as 5 for the number of periods. Good. And then? Great. So now you press PMT in order to get the answer for the payments and now the calculator has all four variables. The calculator has a PMT, it has a PV, it has an N and it has an I. Right, now what do we do? If we want to read line number three. Well done, so now you press down arrow amort Good. Correct. So now we need to do that three times. So down arrow amort one, two, three times until you see three, three on your screen. Now what? Nice. Well done. Perfect. So you got the principal. Good. Then you get the interest. Perfect. And then you get the balance. Well done. Okay. And that's how you would do the actual calculation on an HP calculator. Um, trying to recreate an amortization table without having to actually draw up an amortization table. You're just... Um, inserting the variables in the calculator and then using the calculator to give you the right line items that you want. It's very easy. Yes. Yes. It's good to ask questions to get help. Okay, yeah, the memory is important to clear when doing new questions. Um, yeah, blue up is fine because that's just clearing memory, but I just prefer if I was going to use the HP I would rather clear everything just in case. It's just safer to clear the whole calculator um, than just the memory.